Hi there, Tosca Reno here, and it's my pleasure once again to present another program co-branded with CanFit Pro and the Eat Clean Diet. This program is called Eating Clean and Making Holiday Meals Healthier, presented by Tosca Reno and CanFit Pro. What you're going to learn in this seminar is why the holidays are a difficult time to maintain health, and they truly are, and you may already begin to feel that pressure mounting as the days tick closer and closer to holiday season. What you're also going to learn is what are the main contributing factors. And this is a real thing. There is such a thing as holiday overwhelm. So what is holiday overwhelm? Do you approach the holiday season with a deer in the headlights look in your eyes? If so, you are not alone. In fact, statistics actually prove that deaths around the holiday season increase by 4%. Um, and at the same time, the average age of people dying is younger. What we're finding also is that during this time, heart-related deaths spike by 5% during Christmas, and the worst day, it peaks on December 25th. So these emotions, feelings, and statistics all add up to that situation we know as holiday overwhelm. It's not hard to figure out that the main contributing factor for this is stress. Stress permeates every area of our lives, but most particularly at this time of year. So stress is the main contributing factor to increasing illness and mortality during the holidays. Um, if you think about your own life for a moment and try to evaluate where the stressing factors are, they can include such varied points as financial responsibility, the additional financial strain over the holidays, the time constraints, um, obligations, feelings of expectations that you are trying to meet, and you often feel isolated in the pursuit of these factors. Other contributing factors for the state of overwhelm is poor nutrition. Strangely, we think that we have enough calories in our diets, but in a very unusual twist, for the first time in history, we have an abundance of calories, but a severe lack of nutrients. So, and particularly during the holiday season, ignoring self-care habits really does include proper nutrition, we tend to forget that this is an important platform on which to build our wellness. So when we have a lack of appropriate nutrients to support the immune system, it's all too easy to fall ill. And it's no surprise then that not only do we see the increases in heart disease and um, stress, but also we, we find that small disease, small illnesses like flu and cold, which may not seem small to you, but they seem to be on the rise. And this is not a coincidence. Also at this time of year, isn't it interesting to note that we do consume many more sugary snacks? And I'm talking about the Christmas fare, the cookies, the candies, even alcohol. So consuming too many sugary, quick fix food, fixed foods will contribute also to this deteriorating situation we find ourselves in. And then another critical piece is poor hydration. And at the moment, the number one nutritional deficiency in North America is hydration. Though we see everyone running around with water bottles, we are indeed dehydrated. Let's look at the contributing factors in a cohesive list. So we now know stress, and everyone can really tap into that for a moment. You can feel that stress in your heart, in your breath, in your physical self. Um, one thing we can do to help ourselves is to ameliorate the stress. Uh, we can also spend more time outdoors as opposed to indoors. But as we know, when the weather gets cooler, we do tend to spend less time outdoors and more time indoors. Um, we also are in closer contact with more people. Um, and this happens through parties, events, your travels, wherever you happen to be, because people are less outdoors and more indoors, you're gonna be exposed to those particular pathogens. Um, because there's such a demand against your schedule, your time, often we begin to lack sleep. And that is chronic, it, it adds up. You can never really make up for uh, lack of sleep. Um, 
Then we think about poor nutrition. Eating poorly, particularly eating more sugar, depresses the immune system. It, in fact, it overwhelms it. Um, then we think about the normal things that we participate in during the course of the year. Many of us do enjoy exercise. Uh, many of us practice meditation. We uh, practice rest, yoga, deep breathing, or other types of experiences that help us ground ourselves. Um, these things tend to disappear because we're so time constrained, we forget to put these things back into our schedules. And then a critical piece is journaling. Um, this, is, this is an area where some are just learning how to do this, but it will add to your stress if you don't have an outlet for those emotions and you're normally the kind of person who will express three, these through journaling. So planning is going to be a crucial tool in your wellness kit. This will help ease holiday overwhelm. What does this mean? What is planning all about? Well, we know this if we practice planning in our current lifestyle where we're already taking a day to plan our meals or to plan our schedules or to plan our wellness or self-care, that you will more likely commit to this. But during the holiday season, if the cook happens to be you, you will need to get a plan in place so that you are the, if you're the one who's presenting the various elements of holiday celebrations, you have a strategy. Um, these often include meals like breakfasts, brunches, lunches, feasts, even open houses, and everyday dinners. So it will be important to focus on being well prepared and using the best ingredients. Um, so what I like to say here is planning encourages success and helps us ease that state of stress and overwhelm through the holiday season. What I have created um, to help you and to help those who are interested in serving in a more present state of mind during the holiday season is the Eat Clean Holiday Survival Guide. And in this, I've developed 28 recipes that are fairly straightforward. You don't need to be a chef to, to, to do these. You can just follow the recipe and have success. And these 28 recipes are packed with nutrients to help you get through your, your nutrient needs, to get through mealtimes of any kind during the hectic holiday season. I've made sure that each recipe is packed with nutritious ingredients and that they don't require much preparation time because Let's face it, we have less and less time over the holidays. What the recipes will offer is love and helping hands in the kitchen. It'll be a go-to tool for you to be able to say, oh, I know that this recipe has been created with love and with the intent to serve and that it's loaded with nutrients and it's been tested in the kitchen, so I will have success also. And so what follows is a sound strategy for getting you through the season with ease and success. And for that, I wish you happy holidays. Okay, so now I'm gonna to present to you my Eat Clean Approved strategies for managing wellness throughout the holidays. Let's think about the eating experience. One strategy that really helps us be in the moment is to practice mindful eating. Mindful eating means to give the food you're about to eat careful thought. Think about the nutritional value of what is on your plate. Create a plan around consuming only healthful, nutrient-dense, clean foods. Be respectful of, your, of the body's needs for nourishment and view each meal as an opportunity to replenish lost nutrients. Think also about the time of year we're in and what fruits and vegetables are in season at this moment. If we focus on eating those, they will not only be more budget friendly, but they will be nutrient dense because they're at their nutritional peak when they're in season, but they're also more carbon footprint friendly. In other words, we didn't have to fly a plain load of asparagus from Peru to put on your dinner table. So let's be thinking about things like cabbages and squashes, sweet potatoes, root vegetables, and so on. A second strategy uh, is to practice portion control. Portions have become vastly skewed in our North American way of eating. But if we allow ourselves to manage food intake by thinking about the volume of food we're eating, to look at what is actually on our plate 
and to relate that to the size of the stomach, which can only handle at most about three quarters of a liter of food, maybe a liter tops. So follow recommended serving sizes and measure your servings if you must so you can have a better understanding of what that is. I like to use my own hands as a tool to measure what proper portion should look like for you. And because our hands are individual to us through size, you can look at, say, the palm of your hand and ex sort of evaluate that that is the amount of protein that you should eat per, per meal per serving. And this does not have to be strictly animal proteins. This can be also vegetable proteins like hemp seeds and soy and so on. Um, we can use our two cupped hands to approximate the volume of, say, greens you're going to eat, uh, particularly lettuces and so on. And I'm, I'm heavy on those, so my hands are big and I put a lot of greens in there. Um, and then if we look at something that's more nutrient-dense like Brussels sprouts, apples, fruit, that can fit in the palm of your hand, same with complex carbohydrates from grains. So these are, these are helpful tools to help us manage how much. When we practice portion control and manage portions, we help to offset unnecessary weight gain. And unfortunately, through the holidays, there's an average five pound weight gain. But if we manage our portions, we can offset that. And we can also help to balance blood sugar and insulin levels. And this is important because it's the fluctuations in these that contribute to weight gain. Another practice is to eat slowly. So imagine you're sitting at your table and you're looking at this beautiful plate of in-season foods that are at their nutritional peak. And then you chomp down and you miss all the value of what's there. So eating too fast is now widely recognized as a contributing factor to the conditions of overweight, obesity, and the diseases that result. Think about that, eating too fast. And everything in our life at this moment with food seems to be happening at rapid speed. So if we can just slow that down. But here's what happens. When we eat too fast, the release of certain gut hormones that create the feeling of satiation or fullness are blocked. We really need about 20 minutes for the body to recognize that we are satisfied, satiated. So to help yourself, we eat slowly. That means we chew each bite 25 times to help slow the process of eating and nourishing yourself down. That process is called fletcherizing. Chewing each bite 25 times is fletcherizing, but it's greatly helpful. Another practice I'd like to do is look at the plate that you're about to fill and think about what's going on that plate. Now, what we want is to divide the plate into 30, 30, 40. So I follow the 30, 30, 40 rule for macros, and that means macros are protein, fat, and carbohydrate. So we're going to put 30 plus, per, thir, fill 30% of your plate with protein, another 30% with healthy fats, and 40% with complex carbohydrates, of which 20% of these are from greens and other vegetables, and the remaining 20% can be starchy grains and or dairy. When you can envision your plate this way, it's much easier to manage weight and consume all the important ingredients to keep you at your optimal peak. And again, remember, that's the goal. We're trying to eat well over the holidays. And we're learning how to do this by the mindfulness, by looking at your plate, and by identifying where the stressful components are. All right, another strategy is to make sure that you maintain eat clean habits to the greatest extent you can. So follow the eat clean way of life, meaning eat plenty of whole, nutrient dense, minimally processed, well-sourced, properly prepared foods. Avoid all refined sugars and try to eat every two and a half to three hours to keep blood sugar levels stable. On an earlier slide, we mentioned that hydration is a number one nutritional deficiency in North America. Obviously, a solution is to drink plenty of water, particularly at this time of year. Often, if you are hungry, you will be hungry before you're thirsty, but you don't understand that what's really happening is the body is looking for water. So drink water first to see if that helps the hunger go away. Your daily water intake should be about three liters per day. 
drink more if you are a very active person or in hot climate, hot conditions. So active people, by that I mean people who spend an hour or more uh, exercising at a very high level of 65% or greater maximum heart rate. Keep in mind that the body well hydrated also helps remove, sorry, I have to say this again. On an earlier slide, I mentioned that hydration is the number one nutritional deficiency in North America. So clearly a solution is drink plenty of water. Often you are hungry before you are thirsty. Drink water first to see if that helps the hunger go away. Your daily water intake should be about three liters per day. Drink more if you are a very active person or in hot conditions. By very active, I mean a person who is exercising for one or perhaps two or more hours a day at a maximum heart rate of 65% or greater. Keep also in mind that keeping the body well hydrated also helps you remove toxins. This is an ideal strategy for staying immunologically strong during the busy holiday seasons. Basically, water helps you flush out toxins and pathogens that accumulate in the body. Drinking enough water also helps prevent dehydration. Dehydration is the main cause behind headache, backache, loss of focus, constipation, irritability, drowsiness, impatience, and a poor sense of well-being. So staying well hydrated also helps you manage weight. Isn't that interesting? When we are tired, we want to eat, particularly carbs, because they give us a quick rush of energy. But water can stop all of this as well as cravings. As an additional strategy for managing weight over the holidays, and really another opportunity to get nutrients into yourself, um, st another strategy includes starting every meal with a salad or crudite, uh, raw vegetables. So a perfect way to start any meal is either with a fresh vegetable dominant salad or with a platter of crudite. Filling up on fibrous vegetables ensures that we get plenty of fiber, not only to help us feel full, but to eliminate what is, what is um, accumulated in the body. And also the more vegetables we eat, the greater the chance that we will be sufficiently nourished. In other words, those vegetables are tools to deliver the necessary nutrients like vitamins, enzymes, fiber, minerals, and so on to keep the body optimally well. Now we're going to go into um, strategies that I have developed to, through recipes to help us manage mealtimes. And I will tell, I will narrate a little bit about how these recipes came to be and how they could fit into your wellness strategy over the holidays. And the idea is to keep you from being overwhelmed. So please remember, I have created these recipes in my kitchen, tested them on family members and on my audience. And these are direct from my heart to you. So how about a strategy of having breakfast for dinner? You know, sometimes we wake up a little later on a Saturday or a Sunday and you just want a meal that is breakfasty, but still nourishing. Um, a, a wonderful gluten-free uh, food is buckwheat flour and spelt flour also. So this recipe is based on those particular, uh, shall I say, grains, um, but they are gluten-free grains. So if you have issues with that, you can definitely eat this. And there's a great deal of nutrition in this recipe. They make beautiful waffles. And uh, what I put in here is some coconut oil, which is a heart-healthy fat for your heart. Um, kefir, which pro provides probiotics and flavor, whole eggs, so you get the package of protein as well as fat, and of course, everybody's favorite, apple cider vinegar. Now, nobody wants to eat a plain, dry old waffle, so what are you going to put on top of that? Well, citrus is in season at this time, and so is cranberries, so I've made a compote. Yes, the joke is people say it's compost, but <laughs> we cook um, the citrus fruit, the, the blood orange, the cranberries, and the delicious vanilla and ginger and make a sort of a syrupy hot compote that you then put over the waffles. And this can serve as your, your breakfast, it can serve as your brunch, or if you've made additional waffles, you can freeze them, put them in the toaster and pull them out on a morning when you're pressed for time. And how about now if we move out of brunch mode 
and we head over to comfort food casserole. I'm a big one for looking in my refrigerator and saying, oh, I have this and I have this and I have this and I just want to put it together, shove it in the oven. So while it's cooking, I can do wrapping gifts or something else. The thousand other things that we have at this busy time of year. <clears throat> so imagine this is your kind of lazy casserole, but it's been loaded with so much nutrition. So again, we're starting with eat clean foods like olive oil, onion. Onion, by the way, delivers a lot of immune boosting effects for us um, through its, well, you can tell because you can smell the, the pungence of the onion and garlic as well. Use a lot of this throughout the holidays and, and over the cold winter months. Celery is a bit more bitter. It's, it's also a detoxifying food, but it gives us loads of fiber. And carrots, especially this time of year, are loaded with uh, lycopene, which is that orange ingredient, that antioxidant that we need. Um, and if you reach for organic turkey, um, you know that it will be a healthy kind of turkey that doesn't give you uh, all those unwanted things like toxins, chemicals, pesticides, and so on. I'm going to throw some crushed tomato in there. Look, all you do is you put all of this into a casserole, throw it in the oven, and bang, you're done. And it makes additional servings, so you're going to have plenty on hand. <clears throat> One of one of my family's favorite meals, which is really weird because the holiday time doesn't seem like it ought to be about uh, South American dishes, but Ropa Vieja. And I think it's just because it's fun to say it. <laughs> but um, this takes advantage of what is commonly thought of as a cheaper cut of meat, uh, the flank steak. But when you cook it this way with the apple cider vinegar, with the lime juice, with all the, the citrusy flavors, um, the tomatoes, the peppers and so on, the, the meat uh, shreds in your fingertips and it just makes this beautiful, succulent, and very pungently flavored dish. Remembering that citrus, again, is something that is needed along with the heat of onions and peppers and so on to deliver um, particular nutrients for this time of year. I also love the fact that there's cumin in this dish. Think of it as turmeric. Of course, that's an anti-inflammatory, and it's an ingredient that switches on the ability of 2,500 of your genes to function better. So you'll want that in your uh, repertoire. Um, cinnamon and cloves are interesting too. Cinnamon helps manage blood sugar, and cloves is highly immune defensive. So uh, don't skip out on those wonderful nutrients. <coughs> Now, here's one of my all-time favorite recipes, mostly because when I make it, I have a glass of wine on hand. Okay, I know that's not clean, but it's really fun. <laughs> so this is actually adapted one of, uh, from one of our uh, Canadian historical figures, Peter Zosky, who was a long-time um, figure on uh, CBC. And this recipe came from a story he once wrote, and this is where I learned to write recipes in stories. And I really love that because while you're reading uh, reading a story, you're finding out, oh, this is how this stew was made. And so uh, get a cutting board out, pour a glass of wine. You need the wine for the recipe anyway, and have all those root vegetables that I was talking to you about that are in season in the colder climates and begin with chopping and sipping and layering these beautiful flavors together. And you will have an unbelievably rich satisfying and succulent dish it's humble but it serves and on that cold day I, I often serve this after the Christmas parade when I took my children when they were young and we would have big crusty loaves of bread and a couple of bottles of wine and it's just nourishing and delightful all right, and now because I recognize that we live in a beautiful and diverse country um, and we have many divergent tastes, I love this recipe that celebrates the beauty of, again, turmeric and curry and heat and flavors and cashews. And so this is um, an Indian chicken ragu. And again, you'll notice there's a theme here. A lot of these dishes are what I call sittables, where once you've got them made, they're in such abundance, you'll have a few recipes or a few servings to last you for a couple more meals, which to me at this time of year is always a goal. Um, this recipe takes full advantage of probiotic rich foods like yogurt. Even uh, garlic and onions have probiotics in them. I love the protein coming from cashews. They get nice and soft and they take on the beautiful flavor of turmeric in the dish. And heat. Heat is something that you want, cayenne pepper, chilies, and so on, because they boost our immune system. And that is, that is a fact. All right, we're going to move on to uh, easy leek and potato soup. I see it's e I say it's easy because if you can chop and throw in a pan and press a button to blend, Bob's your uncle. You got soup. Um, so 
Prebiotics is an important word, and leeks are actually a highly prebiotic food. So what they do is they provide prebiotic ingredients, uh, basically insoluble fibers that help to nourish the gut and provide those prebiotic effects to feed the friendly bacteria in your gut. Remembering that immune health is all about your gut. So when we feed our gut with this uh, beautiful food, creamy and rich soup, and the creaminess does not come from fat, particularly, or cream. It comes from when we wash the vegetables, chop them, cook them, let them simmer in a healthy oil, um, and then puree. Uh, it, it's just a beautiful dish. And we have another delicious meal, which is coconut curry lentil soup. Again, taking advantage of the diversity of flavors that we can find on our grocery store shelves. I do encourage buying fresh ginger root and fresh turmeric if you can get it throughout the holidays. Ginger is highly anti-inflammatory. It also helps to boost our immune system. We know this. I've already talked about this with onion, garlic. The first, actually, the whole first list of ingredients here, including the chilies, all boost the immune system and we'll take all the help we can get. Interesting fact about coconut oil and actually coconut milk is that it is one of the few fats that is antibacterial, antimicrobial, antiseptic, and uh, serves our immune system in a powerful way. So I would definitely get some of this beautiful coconut oil in your kitchen. And we can rely on red lentils, for protein, and we're going to have some chopped kale for those complex carbs. Also, you'll notice uh, in the produce section during the winter months that squash of all kinds, just an abundance of squash, is out and about. And there is something really beautiful about bringing home a variety of squashes and preparing them simply by, and I'm the laziest of cooks, I promise you, I just basically chop the squash, leave the seeds and string in, roast it all first, and then when you want to use the squash, it's very easy. You just scoop the mushy stuff out that you don't want to eat, the string and the seeds, and you've got that beautiful flesh to do with as you will. But this is a nice dish because you basically bake it and you dust it with uh, Provencal herbs, and it is delicious. And um, I, I love also to do a big platter of oven-roasted fall vegetables. Really, you can use any mixture of vegetables that is available. I'm thinking about Brussels sprouts and all the rest of it. In this particular recipe, we're using, using uh, root vegetables mostly, but don't be afraid to throw in what is looking good to you on the produce shelves and simply prepare the vegetables on a big roasting platter. Get that oven nice and hot. Uh, line your baking sheet with a bit of parchment and then drizzle some gorgeous olive oil and some unrefined sea salt, Celtic sea salt. Um, the reason I want you to do that is because that salt contains all the nutrients and minerals you want to also, again, feed you, nourish you, supply you with minerals. And oven roasted fall vegetables, they go with just about anything, right? And great to take for lunch, too. And who doesn't want a pasta, right? <laughs> Over the holidays, pasta is a quick one. And this uh, recipe takes full advantage of that longing for something satisfying like pasta. But we use roasted vegetables. So, you know, fennel, fennel bulbs. Um, I've even occasionally thrown in things like radicchio, eggplant, zucchini. And you just make a sauce with this. And heck, if you want to throw in a squash, do. Take advantage again of those seem to have a repeat um, series of ingredients when I talk about things like the unrefined sea salt, the coconut, the, the red uh, hot chili flakes, um, cider vinegar, and even fresh herbs like rosemary. They totally support the immune system. Beautiful. And that's going to be a lovely dish. And then who hasn't come home on a Friday and said, oh my God, it's been a busy week. I'm exhausted. I don't want to cook been me many times, but you still have your family to feed and you want to nourish yourself. So this is my busy night stir fry. And we take advantage of flavors like tamari, which for me is that that umami salt flavor. And I, I especially love that whole idea of a sesame sauce somehow. And basically, we just whack together a whole bunch of vegetables. We do a stir fry and we um, create a dish that can be ready in literally minutes. 
Uh, and here we go with another. Now, this is a favorite. This usually appears on my family's Christmas dinner table as the appetizer. It's my butternut squash soup. Um, I can make this with my eyes closed. <laughs> um, and again, of course, taking advantage of things like butternut squash, which, which is in season and reasonably priced, um, extra virgin olive oil, Vidalia onions, which are sweeter. I use a whole bulb of garlic because I'm going to make a big whole bunch of, of soup here. Um, and, and just nourish yourself with this creamy velvety soup don't forget also homemade broth bone broth is is another key way to help you have a stash of goodness on hand so when you want to make a quick soup recipe it's already there you can do it um Oh, how about turkey meatballs? Everybody loves turkey meatballs. <laughs> and I, I like to make these meatballs in, a, in the perfect size that I can just throw it in my lunch and have two for lunch when I'm on my way. Because I, I love the meatballs cold as well as I like them hot. But basically, we use lean ground turkey. Sometimes I use a mixture of turkey or chicken. The recipe's here. Don't worry. You can follow it or you can just thumbs up and do whatever you want. Um, but I do like to use oregano. Once again, oregano adds that hit of flavor. You've got that oregano oil in there um, and garlic and so on. This is so easy, honestly. And you can get your kids to help you make the meatballs. I just use an ice cream scoop or a measuring cup and uh, scoop out about a half cup meatballs. And there you go. Bake it in the oven. You don't even have to think about a thing. And here we go. Everybody wants a little sweet. You knew I was coming to that. <laughs> so um, the, I, I like the trail mix bars because when they're done, you can wrap them individually and take them with you when you're uh, rushing off to drop your children at you know a concert or an event or going shopping, Christmas shopping. Shove this in your purse. You don't have to fall victim to the hangries when you're at the mall or long lineups for something that probably doesn't serve you. And so this recipe takes full advantage of beautiful flavors from things like figs and apricots, cranberries, almond meal, sunflower seeds, walnuts. By the way, go ahead. If there's something in this recipe that you don't like, double up on the other. It doesn't matter. Make it your way. But uh, sweeten it with applesauce because applesauce is full of fiber. It's not sugar. And once this is done, you're going to have a beautiful, portable, nourishing and delicious snack to take with you. Now here's some fun <laughs> chocolate drops. These are so good. Using cacao powder, almonds, natural nut butter. butter. It's, it's a non-bake recipe, which is lovely. So basically, if you have the ingredients and you have a food processor and you know how to put the press the start button, you're good to go. And so this is another delicious uh, treat. And, and this is an alternative to those a lot of those sugary cookies that appear this time of year because we're just using dried fruits and we're just using natural ingredients, raw nuts, almonds, dates, and so on. Um, and don't forget, cacao is a nourishing food, right? So um, you're going to get plenty of that in there too. Delicious treat. Okay, back to the savory chicken fajitas. That's always fun. People like to make their own dish. So there's a wonderful fajita recipe here. Lots of amazing ingredients. You can make it up, put your own in there, but we're using zucchini, yellow onions, red pepper, green pepper. Um, I love hoisin sauce and we've added some shredded lettuce, but I've also done this with Napa cabbage to up the vitamin C factor. Um, easy. It's easy and you can get your kids or family to help. And here is a lovely sweet potato salad. Sweet potatoes are also in season this time of year. They're, I don't know, I just love sweet potatoes. And when you buy organic sweet potatoes, no need to cut off the skin, just give them a good scrub. Um, but this is a beautiful toasted pine nut sweet potato salad. Doesn't that sound good? I want some now. Um, and make your own dressing, very easy. We're gonna use natural maple syrup, apple cider vinegar, avocado oil. We don't have to go crazy. Uh, and so again, another delicious salady type dish that serves not only as a main dish, but as a side if you want to. So if we stop and think about what's available to us for wellness, it's all here in our nutrition, it's all here in our planning, and it's all here in the goodness of what is available to you with this education program presented to you by myself, Toscarino, and CanFit Pro. Thank you.